based on the current scenario, and you know this is uh, probably the best time ever. Uh, whether you look at government policies, you look at the uh, geopolitical situation, you look at the current state of the economy. Uh, you know, everybody is saying this is uh, uh, India's decade, right? So right from uh, uh, mobile phones, uh, you look at the retail market. Every market in India is is booming. And uh, again, I think India's recovery uh, in the pandemic has been tremendous, and that itself has presented a lot of opportunities. Uh, the stock market is doing very well. Uh, overall, the industry is good. Um, so I think um, you know, if you just look at all of these macro factors and you bring it down to the PCB manufacturing industry, um, it's definitely going to perform very well. Now, um, um, again, another very important thing is that you know the, the existing base is very low. So the the growth is definitely going to be in, in high double digits. Uh, there is no doubt about uh, the fact that uh, India as a electronics uh, manufacturing destination is only going to uh, you know gain traction. And uh, companies are moving out from China. Uh, a lot of uh, global companies are uh, uh, you know now implementing their uh, China plus one policy. Uh, earlier it was just a policy, but now it's being implemented. Uh, companies are coming to India, and uh, depends. You know, if they're product companies, that's good because then they bring in their supply chain, which is an assembly company. Then the assembly company brings in its supply chain, which becomes PCB. So it's it's just a growth path from here on. You know, if you look at this uh, um, five years from now, you will definitely see this trajectory is going to be this way. See, I think uh, you probably must have heard in today's uh, uh, you know seminar that Indian companies are uh, already exporting about 45 to 50 percent of their uh, production. So that's a good figure, uh, and uh, the fact that the numbers will grow in terms of domestic manufacturing, the exports will you know automatically grow. Uh, the important factor is to bring in the ecosystem because that helps us becoming more competitive. Uh, uh, you know, our reliance on uh, the uh, imported supply chain will then go down. Uh, so therefore, uh, exports will get further uh, boost. Uh, lastly, the government is definitely working on uh, uh, you know uh, SOPs for the industry uh, and working on making exports uh, you know better. Uh, the the uh, you know the the policy framework is changing. Uh, the SEZ Act is being installed, is being abolished, and a new act is coming in. And uh, again, uh, you know, we we all have seen that the rupee actually has performed much better than all the other currencies uh, in the region, and uh, uh, you know, compared to our peers. And then again, you know, the GDP growth, uh, you know, world's top most uh, people are saying that seven eight percent is what's going to be. Um, yeah, see, challenges are quite a bit, uh, but in a nutshell, uh, I would you know put it into three. One is uh, supply chain ecosystem that has to be seriously looked at, uh, so that certain entrepreneurs or certain large companies can start to manufacture those uh, uh, commodities or those raw materials within the country. Number two, policy framework has to be very very crisp and crystal clear. So that if there are companies looking for joint ventures, and you know, I said it in my uh, my uh, uh, you know chance at the seminar that um, whether it's Chinese or Taiwanese or, or you know Thai companies, I mean, you should invite everybody for technology. We don't have it, so we need it. Uh, put measures in place so that you know it's not it's not a challenge for the country on the on the political side, but uh, uh, policy framework has to be very very important. Uh, and the third is that the PCB industry by itself. Should be again. I I believe this should be given infrastructure and you know high priority sector status um, because the needs for the PCB industry can only be met when those things are in place. Trust me, there will be tons of companies who will be wanting to come to this country to manufacture PCBs if those things are taken care of. Uh, water requirement, power requirement, 
uh, uh, effluent treatment plant uh, you know, becoming a common ATP which either uh, the, the state or the, or the center can uh, help set that up, uh, common infrastructure, all these things are going to uh, really help. You know, like the Gati Shakti program, uh, that's going to help because it ties up the entire uh, uh, logistics infrastructure. So all these things are very, very good. See, uh, there is no doubt about it that when you look at uh, uh, you know other countries, India's demographics are probably the best, right? The the middle class, the the age, you know, most uh, 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 you know countries in the world, when you look at Japan, Taiwan, Europe, they have tremendously aging populations. So India does not have any of those disabilities. So the 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 pool of resources is available. How do we harness that pool is very important. And I believe so that the industry, academia and the government have to get their act together, come together, make tailor-made programs for the for meeting the aspirations of the youth so that they are willing to join the workforce in terms of not only PCBs but manufacturing on the whole. Um, everybody you know, tends to run to the services sector and uh, that's for obvious reasons but if the manufacturing sector uh, is is given you know the due importance is marketed well um, and as I said you know the aspirations of the youth have been ta are taken care of there is no reason why um, the skill set cannot be uh, enhanced uh, we have time and again proven that India's engineering talent is is um, you know best in the world and it can definitely do so in this space as well uh, but we need to uh, you know, give an opportunity to the youth to be able to, uh, uh, you know, harness and hone their skills, and that will only happen when all the three bodies get together. So, Infopart Technologies is one of the two companies of the Sahasra Group. Uh, the Sahasra Group is, uh, you know, in uh, electronic manufacturing services. We are in IT hardware. Uh, Infopar by itself is in PCB manufacturing. Uh, we are going to be the first company that's getting into semiconductor packaging uh, when we open our facility in December, January, uh, later this year. Specifically, uh, PCB, uh, uh, you know, from an Infopar standpoint, we are investing rapidly. Uh, in fact, we are going to expand our production capacity by uh, 3x uh, in the next uh, one and a half to two years. Um, we currently export, deemed export and direct export together. Uh, out of all our production capacity, 66% uh, is towards deemed and direct export. So we will continue to focus on the exports because it brings in a lot of value. It helps us maintain our quality and uh, uh, also gets access to technology by our customer connect. Um, so we, we definitely believe in the PCB manufacturing space. It's strategic to us internally because uh, it's a captive plant for ourselves. Uh, but the focus on growing the PCB uh, manufacturing is not only for capital consumption, it's for supplying to others in the industry as well. And um, we, we definitely do not want to miss out on the growth in the PCB domain. And we will continue to invest in this domain uh, in the higher end uh, value add uh, technology as well. First of all, I would like to say that uh, you know the taxation system is much simpler today. Uh, since the onset of GST, the taxation is not as complicated as it used to be. Uh, yes, uh, within the GST structure, there are you know different rates, which sometimes causes confusion. The import duty has been quite higher. Right. So there is uh, uh, there is confusion there. So that needs to be uh, you know rationalized so that the GST rates you know instead of being multiple, there are only one or two. Uh, as far as the import duty goes, actually. Uh, you know, PCBs being uh, uh, you know one of the categories where when India signed up to the IT1 agreement of WTO, uh, a finished PCB comes in in India as uh, a, a complete product and it comes at zero duty. Whereas the raw material comes in with duty, which is a slight problem. 
and when the raw material comes in with duty, uh, companies like ours who are in manufacturing, we have to apply for uh, certificates to be able to make that that uh, duty percentage be waived off. Now, uh, that's a bit of a hassle, uh, which requires a lot of paperwork, etc. And so, if that can be uh, you know looked at by the government to be able to remove, to, for it to be removed, then that makes our processing and paperwork much simpler. Uh, but generally, I would say from a GST standpoint, the entire industry is probably happy with that. Um, uh, yes, there are other things that the government can uh, probably help with uh, as indirect uh, uh, things that they can do. As I said, uh, you know, help the industry in uh, because it's a, it's a very demanding industry in terms of power, water, consumption. So, if PCB industry can be given uh, special status and therefore um, taxation in terms of, let's say, the electricity duty can be reduced, the water rates can be reduced. Uh, so indirect benefits are, is, are what we're looking at. So uh, we definitely uh, at InfoPower, as I already mentioned, are continuing to invest in the PCB manufacturing space. Uh, our aim is to be uh, amongst the top 10 PCB manufacturing players uh, within the next three years in India. And uh, we are actively looking at uh, joint ventures, uh, mergers and acquisitions to be able to scale up uh, either with uh, like-minded uh, companies or even overseas players so that uh, we can actually achieve uh, the numbers that we are looking at.